Um, bonjour. Bonjour. Bonsoir. Bienvenue. Merci. Bienvenue sur Texan Translation à Texan Translation. Parfait. Uh, je m'appelle Marc Hanson. Et vous? Je m'appelle Sandra Chazelle. Enchanté de vous connaître, de vous. Oh man, I haven't spoken French in a long time. <laughs> oui, de vous connaître, c'est okay, ou de vous rencontrer. De vous rencontrer. Mm -hmm. um, this episode is of uh, Welcome to Texas is called uh, Texans Are from France. And our special guest star today is Sandra J Chazelle. Chazelle. Yeah. All right. Um, I knew I was going to get that wrong. <laughs> um, Sandra was a friend of um, one of our past guests, Lorena Devlin, mm -hmm. and she introduced us. And I'm so excited you could be here with us today and tell us about what it's like to move here from France okay. by way of um, Ireland, I just learned. So uh, first things first, uh, where are you from? Where did you grow up? So I'm from France, yes, and I grew up in uh, Lyon, mm -hmm. uh, which is a big city, very interesting city. But I also grew up in the countryside because I was born about an hour away from Lyon yeah. in the countryside. So my heart is in nature and my heart is also in the city environment. Would you spend the summers out in the country? I did summer in country and some weekend or so. My dad had a huge vegetable garden mm -hmm. and I would spend hours helping him and talking to him and it was a great was, time. Was it a farm? No, he just had a big vegetable garden and he, they, he bought, they, my parents bought a, a old house that they um, refurnished yeah. and they renovated and then attached to this house was a huge vegetable garden. So yeah. Is it still there? Have you, have they, you it's back? still It's still here, but now my parents moved to another house. So this house doesn't have um, the same I mean, the garden's gone. Exactly. But where my parents are now, yes, my dad is keep, uh, keeps doing his, uh, his gardening. Do you still like gardening, even here in Texas? I do, yes. We have a gardening community center uh, that I, I help uh, my uh, parents from heart mm -hmm. to take care about their uh, vegetable garden <laughs> in a community uh, 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 garden, Sunshine Community Garden. Sunshine Community Garden, Garden and yep. that's in North Austin? Yes, North Lamar. Okay. Um, I don't think I've been there, but my kids go to school in North Lamar. That's not far from here. No, no, no. 20 minutes, just uh, from where I live. I, I try to garden every year. I, I get my hopes up and I, 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 I'm optimistic about it. I turn over the soil, I put something new in, and it, something always goes wrong. <laughs> Do you? Do you feel like you've figured out Texas gardening? I'm sure it's different from gardening in France. Well, it's a lot about the soil. I mean, mm. I don't, I don't know if I have a good green hand, what we say in France, having a, a green hand, yeah. la main verte. But I know that my dad used to talk a lot to his, uh, to all his uh, vegetables, <laughs> and apparently he, he was helping. So I'm trying that. Like but po positive affirmation. Well, exactly. <laughs> I'm better to harvest and to cook. <laughs> and to take care of what the, the soil and the, the hard work. It's a good idea. I've heard like of researchers talking to houseplants and then that. recording how they grow and the ones that have the positive energy put into them grow better. All right, so uh, when you were growing up in France, what kind of vegetables would you grow that you can't grow in Texas? That's a good question. I think you can grow pretty much everything. It's just the seasons are different. Mm. Um, it never gets as hot there, I imagine. No, no, no. The, the, the Texas is perfect for the summer vegetable, such as the tomatoes, the mm -hmm. eggplants, uh, the zucchini. This winter we planted uh, some broccoli mm -hmm. and chards. Um, and they yeah, grew. And, and they grew, absolutely. Can you grow leeks here? Leeks, yes, we still have leeks. Yeah. Yes. What is it? Okay, it's the time of this uh, interview is the end of March. What should we be putting in the ground now? So now it's the season for tomatoes, for the eggplants, for um, zucchinis, all the summer. Okay. summer uh, Melons? Yeah, I never planted lemon, melon, mm -hmm. but yes, I think it could, uh, it could work. Yeah. If you talk to your plants or to your vegetables, <laughs> good, good care, water, good soil. Does it matter which language you speak to them? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. 
I think they just they yeah, just feel just the love, right? <laughs> So in your house, there are three languages spoken. Can yes. you tell me about that? So French, of course, and my husband is from Mexico. So okay. we speak Spanish and we speak English, obviously. And we also speak a bit of ASL, American Sign Language, mm. which I learned back when I was living in Ireland because I always love American Sign Language. It's like it's theater. It's just like everything is <laughs> to the facial. I love this language. And, um, Do they speak American Sign Language in Ireland? I don't. No, no. Oh, sorry. Yeah, they could. <laughs> but in Ireland, I met a couple because I wanted to learn ASL. But mm. uh, each country has their own language, sign language. Uh, so in Ireland, they speak Irish sign language. Okay. In America, we speak American sign language. But this couple that I met in Ireland, uh, the wife was from America and the husband was from Ireland. Okay. So he knew ASL and Irish sign language. So he taught me ASL. Huh. And my nickname was Smile. <laughs> Thank you, how nickname. do you do that? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and I had a great time. So the girls, when my twin got, uh, was born, mm -hmm. uh, the language are a little bit delayed because between the three languages and their own language, I introduced to them sign language, so they were, it was so easier, less frustration, because they were able to ask for me or more. Huh. Or even, yeah. Wow, that's, this is a crazy coincidence. We have twins too, and we taught them ASL first, mm -hmm. and then Spanish and English. I, I spoke Spanish to them, and my wife spoke English, and now one of them is majoring in ASL in college. Really? Yeah. That's so good. Yeah. But you, you, um, have found a way to juggle the languages? Do you do you have like a rule for when you speak which language or is it just whatever comes out? That's a good question. So when my, when my uh, girls were younger, until five years old, I homeschooled them in French. Okay. And in, at home we were always only speaking French and Spanish. Uh, and then I, uh, I joined a uh, French community um, uh, a French community, uh, a French community. It's a French. Uh, I, I, I follow their Facebook group. <laughs> yeah, So yeah. I joined a French uh, community uh, for people who, for expatriate people, mm. French people who come here. Social and, group. Right, exactly. And the name is Ostinecker. And when we, I, I, I joined this uh, this uh, community. I met lots of different French families mm -hmm. who had uh, children the same age of mine. Nice. So we started to create a petite école française, and once a week I will meet with different moms, mm -hmm. and then we will create like a little curriculum, and we will talk our friend our uh, children French. So with with a group of several kids. Yeah, we were about ten kids. Mm -hmm. That was fun. And that was before they started first grade? Uh, kindergarten, before I started okay. kindergarten. It's a good idea. Yeah. Are you still friends with them? Uh, yes, yeah. Huh. And so, um, I know at my house growing up, my, my daughters would know they were in trouble when I spoke English to them. Because I only spoke Spanish unless it was too urgent and I was too mad. <laughs> and then English came out and then their eyes would get big. Is it that way for you too? <laughs> a little bit, yes. The things that um, you, may, you may have seen that, but they speak English together because they go to an uh, English school. Yeah. But when we are together, we have a, a, a keyword we say AOF, English, uh, uh, French, or Spanish to remind the girls to answer to her, uh, mm -hmm. to us in French or to answer to us in Spanish. And that usually works? It does work, yeah, yeah. yeah. And one of mine, we, we read a, a little French book of 90 pages and she did very well, so that really excited me. Nice. Have you read to them uh, Le Petit Prince? I started, but it's, 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 it's not that easy for our children, Le Petit Prince. Yeah. But yeah, we did a little bit. I feel like it was really written for adults. Yes, exactly. <laughs> um, so you have twin girls. Yep. And um, let's see, do you, uh, have they been back to France? Have they visited your hometown? Not yet, no. They moved, so when we moved here, they were eight months, mm -hmm. but uh, probably next year. Yeah. This year is very busy for me because I'm, 
I'm training as a lead teacher in the Montessori uh, oh, school. Wow. So I work and I um, started this training last June. So mm -hmm. probably next March or yeah. next summer, but I'm hoping that next year I will bring them. And now there are 11, there will be 12. And I right. think it's even better for them because they will remember, they can experience better. So I think it's... What are some things you really want them to experience about France? Well, it's their family, to see my parents and my sister mm. and their cousins, to experience the food and to visit as yeah. many cities they can, to see the culture from north to south, to see the, the, the landscape, having everything about France. It'll, it'll change their relationship with the language too, I think, to speak it with so many different people. Yes, yeah, yeah. Because in France, they will not have choice <laughs> but speaking French, so yes. I took my son, he was 14 at the time, down to Mexico City. It was his first time in a Spanish-speaking country because I just wanted him to see what it feels like to have to use the language that here he can get away with not using, but down there suddenly everybody expects him to use it. It's an eye-opening experience. It changes yeah. their perspective. And how he be? He be we had to come back early because it was right when the pandemic was um, starting to cause restrictions and they closed all the museums and we couldn't do anything and, and the U.S. State Department said get back here we might close the borders. Aww. So it's kind of a disappointing um, adventure but we're going to do it again once Good. things are, are opened up and back to normal. Back to normal. Perfect. Yeah. Well, um, do you remember when you first moved to the U.S., especially to Texas, what was uh, strange, what was difficult to get used to? Well, the main difficult things for me as a European was mm -hmm. to use my car to go oh. everywhere. No public transit. <laughs> well, we live northwest from, from Austin, so there's no too many uh, public transportation, there's no public transportation, so right. we have to to have to, we have to drive to go from point A to B. Yeah. While well, in, in, in Europe, it's just like we were walking everywhere. So taking the car always to move is, is, is different. It's kind of a, but I knew that though, but I know it is different. Something mm. also that is different is that for me, everything is big here. <laughs> I mean, the spaghetti, the spaghetti bowl, you know, just the first time from the airport. Mm -hmm. And, and to, to go to my sister-in-law, it was, wow, this big road, this big spaghetti bowl, <laughs> and then everything's big. Is that and where all the highways cross? Yes, yeah. and the pickup truck that were as tall as me, and, and then I went to Costco. Yep. And Co I was Costco still blows my mind. <laughs> and I was looking for a, a little a bottle of, of honey, like 200 there's no little anything no. there. And I found a two, three liter of honey and say, everything was so big. So I think that the culture for me is everything is big. Yeah. Compared to Europe, the little boutique and... Uh, yeah. But I'm getting used to it. It's, yeah. uh, we have more space on the road though. It's easier. <laughs> <laughs> I remember my wife went to Germany um, for, her, for her friend's wedding and she came back and saying, everything is so small in Europe, it's so cute. <laughs> it's true. Well, um, do you uh, have any um, special places in Texas that you've really enjoyed visiting? Like if somebody came from France, where would you want them to see while they were here? So um, Galveston mm -hmm. and the beach of Galveston, the San Antonio River Walk, yeah. um, Houston, we did the museum, uh, with the zoo in Houston in Dallas, mm -hmm. uh, in Houston we did the uh, Houston Space Center. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we we love parks, also Zilker Park, Peace Park. Right. Uh, we we have the Long Center. Mm -hmm. uh, my girls right now are at the Bass Hall concert, watching uh, with some friend, the Charlie. Um, and the Chocolate Factory. Yeah. Oh, cool. right now. Uh, yeah, there are so many things to do. So it's and it's it's there's something outdoor. There's mm -hmm. so many outdoor right. things to do because of the weather and uh, right. and yeah. So it's a lovely city. It's a lovely. Have you been to any of the state parks or national parks here? Barstrop. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we did there. We went there. With all the pine trees. Yes. And Before or after the fire? After, I know. 
That was sad. Yeah, it was even nicer before. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's going to be we a while. It, I know. <laughs> and our bucket list is go to Big Ben. Oh, yeah. We have not gone yet, but that's... That's a long drive. Yes, a long drive, <laughs> yes. But we were there over Christmas. We went camping. That's the best time to go because yeah. summer is another shock. Cure right. That is very hot here. Right. You want to stay near the water and yes. the time. So speaking of outdoor sports, tell me about your shirt. Ooh, so this is uh, uh, Austin, the Austin Marathon. Mm -hmm. My uh, sister-in-law's help me uh, preparing, getting ready to run my first Austin Marathon on mm -hmm. 2013. And I did twice actually, I did two uh, marathon. And I loved it. I mean, I ran since I'm 18, but I have never raced. Yeah. And she really made me uh, getting ready and, and enjoying the race. And Austin Marathon is great. People are <laughs> shooting you. The weather is great. I mean, it's... Uh, Do they have live bands playing along the route? They... So, uh, that, yeah. That's how I picture it. Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. <laughs> Austin is called the live music capital. Yes, it is, yeah. The, the, the tourist department calls yes. us the live music capital of the world. And I'm looking forward to running the Cap City 10K very Next good. Month. You will enjoy. That's it's a great period now. That's my first uh, yeah. 10K. I, it's never even crossed my mind to run a marathon, though. Yeah. <laughs> it's very ambitious. Um, before we started, you mentioned that your husband, who was born in Mexico, had right. ancestors who were in Texas yes. hundreds of years ago. Can you yes. tell me that story? So uh, he's, his family is uh, are descendant of Martin de Leon, mm -hmm. uh, which was an, um, an entrepreneur and presario, right. you say in Spanish, right? right. Um, and he's the founder of uh, Victoria uh, City in Texas. Wow. Yeah. So he went there and uh, with his cousin and uh, it was funny, they, they treating him as a, like a celebrity. <laughs> like a they gave him the key to the right. city. Right, <laughs> and so much great welcome and he has a great welcome. They had yeah. a lot of fun. Were they able to find any like old tombstones from their ancestors or or property? Are there still relatives living there? Do you know? Um, I don't think. Uh, no, I'm not sure about that. Yeah, that's probably yeah. 200 years ago. Yeah. Oh, I'm, sure I'm wearing my, my Texas history shirt here. So 1836 yes, yeah. was uh, Texas independence. independence. This is a gift from my mom. Mom, I know you're watching this. Thank you. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> She's up here for the weekend. Okay, good. <laughs> Um, also, I know, maybe you do this too, whenever I'm out in town at the mall or at a concert or something and I hear somebody speaking a foreign language, my antenna go yeah. up and I sort of lean in close yeah. to try to figure out which language it is. Do you ever hear people in Texas speaking French in oh, public? Yeah. This this is a huge French community also. So, oh, yeah. But like recently we went to a restaurant and uh, they were... I was waiting and then I heard some uh, <laughs> French speakers. I couldn't resist to get closer <laughs> and say, and I'm sorry, I can't resist to. So, and we started talking and the woman was from Belgium. Mm. He was from Turkey, but speaking French. Yeah. And he was with another woman who was from American. And there we go. We started to uh, have a great conversation. And then, yeah. Uh, In instant connection, right? Absolutely, yes. But that, that's what I love being in a foreign country. Uh -huh. the, and in Texas, people are so curious mm -hmm. about our route, where we come from. They, 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 they can recognize the accent. And, then, and I'm actually surprised to see how many people can speak French or yeah. have good French knowledge. Mm -hmm. And it's like, it's like, yeah, it's great. I mean, I love it. So that was a surprise when you moved here? Yes, I didn't know. Well, I did not know so many American people had French knowledge, mm -hmm. yes. And I was so surprised, I was also a bit surprised to the big French community that yeah. is in Austin. Have you ever been to Louisiana? I did, yes. Did you hear any, any French or French Creole or, or Cajun being spoken there? No, really, no. And we went whew, nine years ago. Um, um, but no, I didn't hear too many French. It's probably smaller and smaller communities yes, these yeah, days who yeah. still speak French. But 
Um, I, you know, I'm fascinated by languages yeah. and, and expressions, and so I brought a couple of old-fashioned Texas expressions here for you to analyze. <laughs> yeah, let's try. <laughs> Best of luck. Now, the first one, actually, I've heard my mother-in-law say, and she grew up near Galveston in uh, Texas City in Lamarck, um, which is um, right on the coast, and her mother is from Brownwood, Texas. So this is an actual, I can verify, this is an actual historic expression. Um, she always says, got to get back to my rat killing, like at the end of a conversation. And I just wonder if you have any idea what that means. Well, to my rat killing? Got to get back, back to, to my, my rat, rat killing. killing. <laughs> oh, this, she, um, she, I don't know. Does she mean that she has to go back to her own things that she used to do before she had good time right. speaking with you at that? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, good job. <laughs> So it sort of implies uh, chores. Okay. I have to get back to my housework, to my job, whatever okay. it is. Even though nobody's job is really okay. killing rats. I don't know where it came from, but it, I've heard say it many times. This other one I haven't heard, but it made me laugh. He thinks a seven course meal is a possum and a six pack. <laughs> you think the Sarah Scream is a possum in a... You know what a possum yeah, is? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Uh, it's about strength and somebody <laughs> being strong and the other one not strong enough. I don't know. <laughs> that is a wonderful guess. Um, I applaud you. It, it actually, according to my sources, <laughs> and this was on the internet, so you know it's true. Okay. Um, it means that he's unsophisticated. Uh, he lives out in the country. He's a country bumpkin. Oh. He, he eats possums and he drinks beer. And oh, that, no. and that's a fancy meal for him, is possums and beer. <laughs> oh, that's so you would say it about somebody who doesn't belong in a very formal setting. That was good. Yeah. I, I'm a gonna, new one. I'm going to try to use that one today. <laughs> <laughs> so um, are there any funny French expressions that you could teach me? Yeah, so we have, um, okay, j'ai un chat dans la gorge, yeah, j'ai un chat dans la gorge, <coughs> when you can, uh, oh. when you can't really talk or, or your, your throat is, is a little bit itchy and, uh, like the fur on yeah, the back. Yeah, 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 and then it, it, uh, il pleut des cordes, il, il pleut, des cordes. it's raining firewood? It rocks. <laughs> God. It's raining. Really, it's raining a lot. It's oh, raining. like it's constant. Just. Yes. And uh, so we would, I, uh, we would say maybe it's it's raining buckets, raining cats yes, and dogs. Yes, cats and dogs exactly. Yeah. And then and we, we we have a frog in the throat. Yeah, you're a frog. Cat. Yes, we have a cat. <laughs> and then we have another one. It's um, uh, faut pas pousser mamie dans les orties. Okay. Okay. Why? Yeah. No. Allez, let me say. Autrefois. Faut, Faut pas, pas pousser, pousser mamie, mamie dans, dans les, les orties. Les orties. Je ne comprends pas. C'est pas grave. It's said you you exaggerating. Yeah, don't push don't push the grandmother into the needles. <laughs> needles. <laughs> it's when you exaggerate a little bit. And sometimes we like exaggerating. So it's like, Faut pas pousser mamie dans les orties. And and the nettles are the plants that would sting you know, her. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 I have fallen too when I was young. It's right, terrible. Me too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. Well, um, did you have any uh, ideas of what Texas was going to be like before you got here? Any any stereotypes like about cowboys and guns and stuff? Uh, no. Well, well, before we uh, we moved here, mm -hmm. I visited Austin like a few times oh, okay. with my husband. So I knew Austin before we moved here. But yes, the, the cliché and the stereotype of, of, uh, of uh, cowboys and, and guns and boots. <laughs> I saw people with, with boots, uh, boots and hats, yeah. not with uh, guns, no, yeah. but uh, yeah. So you really, saw, you really see that even in modern cities? You, sorry again? You still see people in cowboy hats and boots here? No. No. I have not, no. Have you? <laughs> yeah, sometimes. Sometimes, no. <laughs> like if you go out dancing or something, you, yeah. you still do that. Well, maybe I should do that soon then. Maybe so. Maybe I don't do that enough. <laughs> That's why I don't see the, the cowboy with my... Depends on what kind of clubs you go dancing yes. at. Um, do you have any 
uh, stereotypes about France that you've had to correct people on? Like, do people say France is such and such, and then you set them straight and say, no, France isn't like that, or French people aren't like that? Uh, not really. I, I know that they love, uh, they think that French is such a romantic language, mm -hmm. and then I'm trying to, I mean, today I think my English is pretty Frenchy, or, but I try. I kind of try to um, uh, have more like an American language, and I try to don't get that I'm from France. But <laughs> when I get to know that people like, say, don't change your accent. It's great. <laughs> France is great. France is a romantic language, really, because I don't see when I hear me stop speaking French. I don't really see romantic, but uh, yeah. like. No, all, all Americans think that. Yeah. <laughs> But no. We all think French sounds romantic and, and the British accent sounds sophisticated. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, we had a conversation with some of my co-workers about that and I was saying, I think Italian has a more romantic mm -hmm. sound compared to, uh, compared to France. And then we end, we close the subject and say, okay, I think it's all the Mediterranean language yeah. that can be romantic, so we can englobe <laughs> Italian, <laughs> France, Spanish, you know, everything. Oh, did you bring some things to show us? I don't know. Can we do show and tell? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm showing my, my medals. <laughs> that is small, but it's okay. And that's the, the hearts. And we love this one. The Austin events okay. and things to do. So l let me intro the, the change of scene right here. Yeah. Um, I used to be a first grade teacher. I was a oh, first really? grade teacher for several years. Oh. And you're an elementary school teacher too, right? Oh, cool. And the best part about elementary school for me was show and tell. Yeah. And so you brought us some, <laughs> some show and tell items about your life in Texas. Go yeah, ahead. All right. So this is my, uh, my medals, medals from the uh, Austin Marathon in 2012 mm -hmm. finisher. But my second one, they are beautiful, right? Congratulations. It's huge. It's, yes. it's Texas size. Yeah. I feel like even, can I wear them? Put them on. Go ahead. <laughs> Okay, it's mat it matches my. It really goes with the shirt. shirt. I think so. Oh, yeah. Girls in there. Come on. Right now. <laughs> <There I go. laughs> and of course, NASA. Nice. And that it's a it's a great calendar hosting events and things to do that I yeah. deeply rec recommend, and everything you can do on hosting on a yearly basis. So it was so nice chatting with you today, Sandra. Thank you for coming in. And I, I just love meeting new people from all over the world who have um, something that's drawn them to Austin or to Houston or wherever it is that they're living now. And they have uh, made uh, our, our culture more interesting and enriched it. And so um, I've lived in Texas almost my whole life. Um, I've been to France, but only for about 12 hours one day. <laughs> we were in London and we, and we rode the train over and we had lunch and then came back. And it, it really deserves more than, more than that. I know I didn't, I didn't get the full experience. But I wonder, um, do you consider yourself a Texan now after 10 years here? Yes, and I, I do. And also, I also uh, see myself as a citizen of world, I think would say the world. And we had a wonderful decades here. We meet wonderful people, uh, great support, great opportunities, right. and a really family oriented mm -hmm. uh, city to live in. So absolutely, yes. Well, I hope you guys stay a long time. Thank you, and thank you for inviting me. My pleasure. C'est un plaisir pour moi. <laughs>